Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is April the 2nd, 2022, the night of the <laughs> Feast of Trumpets. Yesterday, last night was the new moon, so today, tonight is the Feast of Trumpets. And, um, I mean, if you can accept it. <laughs> today we're going to be taking a look, we're going to be doing a correction on Ezekiel 5, my understanding. We're also going to incorporate that with a little information about the first seal and the pattern that um, the pattern that comes from the first seal as they kind of connect. You can see the you can see Ezekiel five without this, but it's kind of, it's easier to explain if we look at the first vial. Not we're going to look at the first seal as well, but the first vial. So, Revelation 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So, this we see now. We see the plague. It's here. Now, it hasn't manifested itself as as this but it's still here and it will eventually manifest itself as this I don't want to say too much I don't want to get censored um, so that poses a hmm, it causes Because we can see this now, and this is nowhere near being fulfilled, I mean, it is going to be fulfilled quickly, <laughs> in a short time. But we're the ninth hour church, and this is the eleventh hour church. So because we can see this, we have to recognize the pattern, because there's clearly a pattern in these sevens, that we have to be able to also see this being manifested in some way, which is the first trumpet as well as the first seal. Now I have a correct. Now we have no problem with the first seal. We see Satan, who is the man on the white horse. He's going around conquering and conquering, conquering. We see the false prophets that are manifesting. We see the spiritualism growing as the Bible books are being opened up to us. Everything is coming into play here. We can see this easily. I have a correction, however, on the first trumpet. I'm going to tell you the definitions and then at the end we'll look at the definitions because I didn't put them in order. I just stuck them all at the end. So I'll tell you the definitions now and then we will go through them. So now you know what, I'll just jump to the end and we'll look at them. So the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. I forgot to look up hail and fire, so I hope you've seen the other videos. Hail comes down from God over and over, and it always kills. So it's death from God. Fire, we just recently went over that. That's torment. Torment that you have on earth. And the torment is mingled with blood. Blood, um, that's death. It's not... From, it's going to be from man or some kind of plague or something like that. It's not going to be from, from God, though. Um, ming fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt, was burnt up. Trees are the men of God. That's the 144,000. And all green grass was burnt up. Grass, <clears throat> now in the Bible, in the Bible, the men of God are called trees because trees grow forever. They don't die. In the Bible, men are called grass because grass, it has a short life and then it's cut down very quickly. The Bible says we live 70 to 80 years, pretty much on average. And that's a very short period of time in the scope of things, especially in the scope of forever. So men are called grass because they die very quickly. Trees are the men of God which are going to live forever. The regular man is just grass. 
green. I, you know what? Let's look at the definitions and it'll be easier to see when I rather than for me to explain. So let me just jump around here a little bit. Um not really sure where it starts. Let's start here. This looks about right. We'll come back to that. Okay. So, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought down the high tree and exalted the low tree, and have dried up the green tree and have made the dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have, have done it. So, all of these are trees, right? We can tell the difference between the high tree and the <coughs> being brought down the high tree and exalting the low tree. And that's the, you know, that's going to be the those well we that can be anything really but those that have a low degree of importance those that have a high degree of importance and but when it comes to the dry tree he dries up the green tree and then made the dry tree to flourish the dry tree doesn't have any water it doesn't have any luxuries doesn't have any wealth but the green tree in the Bible, it says over and over that um, they're praying on every high hill and under every green tree. You can tell that this green tree has been well blessed, well fed, and and it's sprouting beautiful green leaves. Why, right? So the the wealthy, those that are those that have received great blessings. They don't have to necessarily be exalted, but they have a great degree of, um, in the case of the tree, it's going to be water, <laughs> but it's going to be wealth, whatever it is that they want, they have a great deal of it, and they're called the green tree. So, that's what the green tree is. And then quickly we'll look at the others. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. His days are as grass. He's going to be cut down. There's more in there that says grass withereth and it fadeth away. You can look those up on your own, but his days are as grass. Um, here it is. For the wind passes over it and it is gone. And the place thereof shall thereof shall know it no more. Okay, this is a complete definition. I just needed to read it down, read down a little bit further. But yeah, it says the grass wither it and it fadeth. It, the life is fleeting for the man of grass. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So let's go back. Revelation 8. So it, the first trumpet, which we should be seeing now, because we're already seeing the first vial, <laughs> we're already seeing the first seal, so we have to be seeing signs of this. We may not have recognized them, but they're there. They have to be. So the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast down upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. So there is something going on with the rich. There is we can see also what's going on with the church. The church is not. Um, we can we can see what's going on with the people of God. <laughs> if you you know, if you are a true person of God. You can feel it. I personally, I don't know. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> it's just, but you guys know that when I was online the other day doing research, that they were messing with my computer. That's all I'll say because that's the only thing I've mentioned so far. There's just not a lot going on. But you can still see it. You can feel the changes that are going on as as we open the books because we know that while 
as new truths are revealed, Revelation 12, Ezekiel 12 says that they're going to happen during that time. This It's not going to be prolonged anymore. So, since, so let's go on. I have Ezekiel 12 next. I'm not sure why I put that next. Let's go to, okay, so let's, okay, let's take a look at Ezekiel 12. This is the exalted here. Let's see what I have highlighted. For I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. And I did so, as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day, as stuff for captivity. And in the even, I dig through the wall with mine hand. I brought it forth in the twilight, and I bear upon my shoulders in their sight. Say thou unto them, Say it, thus saith the Lord God, This burden concerneth the princes in Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them. Say, I am your sign. Like as I have done, to, done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulders in the twilight, and shall go forth and shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. So the sign to the children of the house of Israel are, are the captivities, is the captivity of the, the leaders, of the prince in the house of Israel. And say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, They shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment, that their land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all that dwell therein. Now that's reminiscent of Ezekiel 4 where the... I, when I first noticed this, I went to Ezekiel 4, but I didn't put it in this study for some reason. I didn't think to. If the first, if the first trumpet has already begun to come into play, if the sign to the house of Israel is that the people um, are going to be start the princes of the house of Israel in Jerusalem uh, are going to start to go into captivity then this has to happen then the 144,000 have to be taken up after all of that <laughs> they can't go up to heaven and that not be a sign to the people that sign in Revelation 12 has to happen first so this has to be different other than the way that I interpret it and there are other ways to find this as well like I said this time I used Ezekiel 12 when I originally noticed it I remember I went to Ezekiel 4 but I don't remember it, that part now so we'll continue on and now son of man take thee a sharp knife take thee a barber's razor and cause it to pass upon thine head the head are is the are the leaders and upon thy beard beard is unity I have those definitions as well and take the balances to weigh and divide the hair now of course a razor means that you're cutting it short you're, you're cutting it off like you're twiddling down a tree um, and you're cutting the hair you're cutting the hair off of the head and off the beard thou shall burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled this is so this has to happen after the siege this third part that's burnt with fire um, that's perfected the 144,000 this has to happen after the siege is fulfilled and thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife and a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind and I will draw out a sword after them these are the leaders remember the head and it's combined with unity as though the unity um, is going to be disrupted because of the because of the failed leadership so the head and upon the beard and we'll look at those definitions real quick before we continue if I can find them here
Okay, so the righteous show first. No. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Again, uh, it, it combines that unity with leadership that ran down upon the beard. The ancient and honorable. So let's go. Ezekiel 5. Um, just a moment. I thought it said this was Jerusalem, but now it's just saying it's the ancient and honorable, and then the unity. So it's not exclusive, but it's going to say it's down here somewhere. Uh, we're going to skip past that. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Binding them in the skirts is the same thing as putting them under his wing. That's going to be the remnant that's going to that's going to make it through there always has to be a small remnant to, remnant to tell the story there always has to be a small remnant to tell everyone else what's going on then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire they're going to suffer too though for thereof shall fire come forth into all the house of Israel thus saith the Lord God this is Jerusalem I have set them I have set it in the midst of the nations in countries that are round about her and she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statues more than the countries that are round about her for they have refused my judgments and my statues they have not walked in them therefore thus said the Lord God because we multiplied more because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statues neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I have, will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. Therefore, so we know we're the final desolation here. We're the final ones to have to go through this. Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into the winds. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things. Hold on. And with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall mine eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. And then it goes on. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence and with famine. And then it gives us the, the, the thirds again. But it tells us. What is it saying here? This, this, hold on. This is doesn't need to be there. Thus saith the Lord God, this Jerusalem I have set in the midst of the nations and, country, and country, countries that are around about her. This is America. He's just talking about America. He's talking about the exalted up here. The, um, the head and then of course unity is going to be disrupted because of the, the head. So these are the leaders here. And then he says, Thus said the Lord God, This Jerusalem I have set in the midst of the nations and the countries that are round about her. America, excuse me. And she has changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments, etc. And then, of course, it goes on down into the thirds. So all of this is, this is the actual, this is going to happen this is going to happen just as it says after the days of the siege are fulfilled now the reason why I did it now the reason why I did not understand it before I feel like I have to correct this as well 
is because this verse here, before she travailed, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. This has to be Jesus. I, I really thought about it and I really thought about it. It just has to be Jesus. I was set off because of the man child because the 144,000 represent the firstborn. But this has to be Jesus. This here, I'm, I'm still the same on this. I still believe that this is about the 11th hour church. It has her children. It could have said a man child again, but it says her children. Well, the children. The children. She brought forth the children. Um, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? So I still believe this is about the 11th hour church, but this has got to be Jesus and not the 144,000 and that's what set me off. Revelation 12 Oh, hold on. I don't have the right verse here. Uh, let's see. Revelation 12. Here we are. Okay. Um Okay, I've got the wrong verse. Here we are. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. So that's that's correct. Um, I was trying to match it with Ezekiel, with um, Isaiah 66, and that was incorrect. This is correct. She's going to be travailing in pain to be delivered. And there appeared another... Everything else pretty much stays the same. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and she... Heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. All of this is about the 144,000. You can still tell that if you go down a little bit further. And it tells you, gives you a little bit more information. It says, and they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. Because I had to double check all of this as well. But the they can be he, him, or it can be him, her, them, they, any of those. So, but it says, and they overcame him. And I still stand that. I still believe that this is the 144,000. Um, but it can't be Jesus. Because they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And Jesus is the blood of the Lamb. So he can't overcome by his own blood. He has to overcome by the will of God, by God. By the strength of God. Um, this group, this one, this child overcame because of through through the sacrifice of Jesus. So that stays the same except for this. The travailing comes first. And then everything else. So let's go back. We'll go through the verses quickly and see which ones we have not covered. Ezekiel 21. Here we are. This is another example of what's going to be happening. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, See a sword, a sword is sharpened, and also fur, furbished. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. So again, the, the blessed, the exalted, um, it tells you up here that it's not just the princes though, it's the righteous and the wicked. They all get it because it's the it's the land. Um, thou therefore, son of man, prophesy, and smite thine hand together, and let the sword be doubled, the third time. That's not the third time. That's the on the third part. It's gonna the sword is gonna be doubled on the third part. The sword of the slain. It is the sword of the great men that are slain. So, it's calling them the third part here. Not there's there's no time there. And this is the same word for third part. Let the sword be doubled upon the third part, the, the sword of the slain. The sword, it is the sword of the great men that are slain, which enter it 
enter into their privy chamber. Again, the rich. I have set, oh, we don't need that. And I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee into the hand of brutish man and skillful to destroy. Um, I'm not sure why I put that in there. I mean, it's just been a mistake. Oh, hold on a moment. No, never mind. We don't need that. I think this is the last verse here. Hold on. No, there's, there's one more. Um, I spake unto thee in thy prosperity. Hold on. I think there's more up here. There's a lot. <laughs> we'll start from one and then we'll read the highlighted portions. Thus said the Lord God, Thus saith the Lord, Go down to the house of thine king, of the king of Judah, and speak there this word. And say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sitteth upon the throne of David. Thou and thy servant and thy people that enter in by these gates, execute ye judgment and righteousness, and do no wrong. For if you do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house king sitting upon the throne of David. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house, unto the king's house of Judah. Now art Gilead unto me. Gilead was like the most fertile land. <laughs> And the head of Lebanon, Lebanon was the highest hill. That's what, the, that's what they tell us anyway. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited. And then it goes on. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity again. It, there's hints here all over that it's um, that the righteous, that the blessed and those that have been highly favored are judged separately. Or just as a separate people. Even the sacrificial system separates the leaders from the common man. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear. That this hath been thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. And the pastors, surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confounded. For all thy wickedness, O inhabitants of Lebanon, that maketh thy nest in the cedars, how gracious shalt thou be when pains come upon thee, the pain of a woman in travail. In Revelation 11, 3. Yeah, you guys... Um... There was a couple of other things that I have mentioned as far as the persecution of the saints. And I I think that this counts. <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel the same way. But I did mention that they were doing like heavy censoring um, of the information. Not just on YouTube, but a lot of different sites are, are blocking the truth. A lot of them are. Anyway. Let, let me see. We'll read this, and if I still have something to say, then I'll I'll come back to it. And I will give power unto my two. Oh, it, I wanted to. Let me just tell you so that you're not wondering what I'm talking about. Uh, never mind. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything. <laughs> it was just a. It was an. It was off the topic. Let's go on. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed with sackcloth. Clothed with sackcloth. <laughs> These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So we're not looking at all of the the of the deeds that are happening we're focusing in on when it's going to happen right now 
These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters, waters to turn them into blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and the kindred and tongue, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in grace. The whole world's going to see it. <laughs> I just realized it said nations. Different kindreds, different tongues, and different nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So here we come to the last part, which is going to give us the time frame about when all of this is going to happen. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So... Here they're taken up. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. I'm sorry, here they're taken up. <laughs> and that same hour, now this is the sixth hour. <laughs> the same hour there was a great earthquake. That's the second trump. So right after they're taken up, the the desolation the desolation happens also the tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake and in the earthquake were slain it says of men but it's this word means named men so they're called men but men die remember so they're not actually men they're the saved but they're called men so in the earthquake were slain called among the men 7,000 because we know from um, Isaiah that the 7,000 are those that have not bowed the knee for God um, those are the men of God and then it goes on to tell you because you have a semicolon here and the remnant the remnant not of men but the remnant of the men of God were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven so we know that these are the remnant of God because the wicked are not giving glory to the God of heaven. They're not. It's the remnant of the 7,000 who died as men but were of God. They're not dead forever. And the second woe is passed. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Right before the seventh trump, you have the, rem the remnant which make up the 11th hour church. Before that, you have the great earthquake, and right before that, you have the 144,000 being taken up. But a whole lot of stuff has to happen before the final de desolation of America. And we're here for all of it, and through all of it, and, and going to be playing a part in it. <laughs> it looks like it. Looks like we're going to be playing a part in it. But... Anyway, I think that was the last verse. So we'll stop there. Yeah, that was the last verse. But it has to be that the 144,000 are here through through everything. But they're not going to be here when, when America's made desolate. Because that clearly happened after, after they leave in the sight of everyone. But that's not a sign. That's the end. That's why in Ezekiel 12, there was a sign. Anyway, I'm glad I got that out. I hope you all have a nice holiday, a nice feast of, feast of trumpets. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.